Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I am so excited to be sharing some unique shaker card ideas with you. The first card we're going to make is going to use a circle shaker pouch. This is the four and a quarter inch flat acetate shaker pouches, uh, but there's also a three and a quarter and a two and a quarter. And I think there's even like a combo pack you can get where you get just like a couple of each. These have a little bit of film on them, so it doesn't look super clear right there, but that's because I haven't removed that film. I cut a piece of gray cardstock to four and a quarter inches using my circled eyes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my embossed hills and slopes dies to cut the edge of my glitter cardstock to create a snowy hill. One of my favorite color combinations for a holiday sky is a little bit of pink on gray. This is sponge sugar and almost like putting white pigment ink on there. It just sort of lightens everything up. And then I'm coming in with picked raspberry just around the edges and I'll bring that sponge sugar blender back in just to pull that in and sort of soften the edge on that. Then I'm going to flick on some white shimmery watercolor for sort of a snowy feel to that sky. And that kind of finishes up the base of the scene for the inside of my shaker. Now, because I have little bits of shaker sequins and goodies that are going to be running around in there, I want to make sure that right up along the edge, I've got plenty of glue and I'm even using my finger to kind of smooth along the edge because I don't want my bits to get caught in the edge and then stuck in there and then they don't move. It's not my favorite. So once I glue that down onto my gray cardstock, we can start working with this acetate pouch. Uh, I removed the film that covers that. I usually find that along one of the prongs, it's already kind of coming up, but if not, you can use your little pokey tool to get it started. And I've centered my card stock in the back and just used some temporary tape to hold it on there. I'm gonna use the Simply Sentimental Mary stamps and dies for this. Um, I'm gonna use a different shade of pink for the Mary, but that one was just already in my pouch. Uh, and then under that, I want it to say Christmas. So say Merry Christmas. And we're going to stamp directly onto the acetate. I, for reasons that I can't remember, bought a whole bunch of colored stays on ink. It's a solvent based ink and you can stamp straight onto non-porous surfaces. And I had this pink shade that I don't even think I've ever used. So I was like, well, let's give it a try. You guys, it turned out beautifully. If you don't have stays on, you could have stamped that Christmas directly onto the gray cardstock in the background, or you could cut it into a little strip to stick underneath the Mary. I used my quarter inch rip and stick tape all the way around the edges. They're small little pieces, but I wanna make sure when I fold those prongs of the acetate into that adhesive, it's gonna be close enough to the edge that it's touching. So I'm lining this up really carefully. I wanna make sure that my Christmas looks like it's parallel with my horizon line. Um, and then I go for the compass points. I fold one prong over at north, south, east, and west. I find that this is a really great way to make sure that I haven't stuck half of them down and then realize that it's not centered in there. I left a little section where I didn't remove the backers from that double-sided tape. I meant to do that at the top, you guys. I even checked it <laughs> and it ended up at the very bottom. It's fine. It's going to be fine. Um, but I still folded over that prong when I was getting everything started on my compass points because it really does help make sure that my background panel is centered where I want it. This is a new shaker mix from Trinity and it is so pretty. It's called Candy Cottage, and I am gonna dump it all over my desk. And then when I decide I have too many, I'm gonna try to dump the extras into this tiny little tray. You guys, I was having a day. In the end, I have an appropriate amount of shaker mix in there, and I'm gonna remove the rest of that double-sided backer paper, and then I'll fold the prongs into that double-sided tape. It doesn't take very long. They fold really easily, and I'm just shaking it and making sure everything looks good, and it does. This is one of my all-time favorite Trinity sets. It's called the Happy Little Tree Farm. It makes five different trees, and then there's different faces you can put on the trees. I love this thing. I made a ton of cards with it last season. You guys, it's on the retirement list. Okay, so we're gonna make this little card together, and if you decide you like this, I would hop on that right away, okay? Uh, so I am coming in, I've chosen three of the trees and for the bottom two pieces, there's three on each tree, 
I am just doing a little bit of quick ink blending to darken it up where one piece looks like it's sort of overlapping the other. And then on one of the trees, I'm gonna add these little eyeballs. <laughs> this is my favorite option of all the faces, like just these tiny little eyes peeking out from the tree. These stuck together pretty quickly. Um, and then there's like a star you can put on top. You guys, there's a little sign in this set that says tree farm. And then we have a whole bunch of different like tree trunks to choose from. So I'm gonna layer up this third one here and he's, he's just a little bit smaller than the one next to him, the one with the eyeballs. But I think this tree is my favorite. Something about sort of the asymmetrical, whimsical nature of the bottom of that tree. I, <laughs> Can you tell I've put these together a lot? Like I have favorite bottoms of trees. It's all good. Like it's just, it's a great set. So now I'm adding my tree trunks and then on the eyeballs here, there is a little dot that's kind of indented into that white cardstock. And so I'll just take my fine liner and sort of go in there and darken that up. I am using the very scripty Mary from the Simply Sentimental Mary and it's at a darker pink than what we were looking at earlier. Uh, and I have put some rip and stick sheet on the back of that so that it sticks really easily to my acetate and I don't have to worry about glue oozing out. And I'll figure out the placement of my trees and then I am just gonna glue those straight onto the background. This is the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and it is my favorite glue for gluing onto acetate or other slick surfaces. I'm not sure what makes this glue different. I just find that it grabs a little more quickly, a little more easily, so my pieces aren't sliding around on that slick surface while I'm trying to put the next one down. Once I get the trees in place, I'm gonna add a star onto the one with the little eyeballs, like that one's a little extra special, right? Um, and then I will kind of set this aside for a few minutes off camera before I move on to the next step, just to make sure that nothing's gonna start moving if I flip this over and I'm not, you know, watching it like a hawk. This shaker is four and a quarter inches, and so you could turn this into a four and a quarter inch circle card and it will fit into an A2 envelope, but I like a little bit of a color popping out from around that circle. So I have put double-sided rip and stick tape all around the edges, um, overlapping the prongs, right? Just for a little extra stability. And then that pink and white piece are four and a half inches. Yes, that means it's a little bigger than A2, but I'm not really worried about it. I'll just use um, an A6 envelope or an A7 envelope and it'll be just fine. I've added glue all over the background of that and on top of the rip and stick tape just to give me a little wiggle room to help me get it centered. But then once I place that down, the rip and stick tape will grab immediately um, and then the glue will make sure everything dries really sturdy. I'm sticking this in my scoreboard and I scored it at four inches. So I have a half inch sort of lip here at the top that's gonna be what helps my card to open and close. And I am using some mint tape, like post-it tape, just to mark the top center of both pieces. I find this is the hardest part for me of putting a circle shaker shape card together. Um, and then I can just sort of visually line up that removable tape and I will know that my flap on the back is lined up perfectly with the top center of my card. And that's it. I have sort of an unusual color palette and a different shape for a shaker, and I love it so much. For our second shaker, we are gonna use the Frosty Friends Forever stamps and the coordinating dies. And what I love about this set, one of the many things, is that polar bears and penguins are really easy to color. I enjoy coloring, but I am not fast at it. And so sometimes I get intimidated if I feel like the coloring is gonna be really challenging or I have to figure out a lot of different color combinations. But for this, I really am using shades of gray for a lot of it. And then I wanted some pops of color in like the scarf around the polar bear and the little hats on the penguins. So I used a really, really pale gray just to add the tiniest bit of shading on this polar bear. And then I'll use that same pale gray just to add a little bit of shading on some of the edges of the bellies of my penguins. I'm using cool grays for my penguins and I know I probably should have used like a warm gray, but I think an elf like got into my craft room 
and into my markers because they are not here or at least enough coordinating shades of warm gray were not here. So I'm using cool gray because that's what I've got. And then to sort of balance that out when I get to the sort of icebergs or cliffs in the background, instead of using a gray, like I might've used a cool gray there, um, I will bring in the very palest shade of blue to kind of offset that. Okay, we have to talk about how stinking cute this set is like this little penguin with his butt sticking out of the snow and the other penguin that's clearly designed to slide down the back of the polar bear. And I just, I had to use this. I don't do a lot of coloring on camera because I'm not very fast at it. Um, but I was like, we, let's just go for it. To create our winter scene, I am starting with a piece of A2 cardstock in some pale blue, and I'm just ink blending around the edges of the sky of that, right? Just to sort of draw our eye into the lightness of the middle of it, and then I'll flick on some of that same white shimmer paint just for this, a little bit of sparkle, a little extra something going on in the background. Um, and then because I'm impatient, I just use my heat tool off camera to dry everything really quickly. I knew I wanted a snowy hill for my foreground, and so I just laid out my polar bear and my two snowy cliffs just to kind of figure out how high up I needed to go. And then I just used a pair of scissors to kind of cut a gentle slope out of this cardstock. I'm using some 65 pound cardstock here. It's a white shimmer cardstock, but really it's important to me on this one that it's fairly thin. And I'm using that same glue trick where I make sure that the glue is going all the way up to the edge using my finger to kind of smear the glue all the way around because we're gonna cut a hole out of that. There are these insider sentiments. It's one of my favorite sets from the holidays. And then these are the dies that cut them out. And I am just gonna grab one of those dies to cut my shaker window, right? You don't have to have a set of specialty dies, kind of see what you have uh, that can cut a hole that might be really interesting. I love the debossed detail on these, right? Beautiful for highlighting your sentiment, but I really love it in that shaker window too. And that 65 pound cardstock made it so that it debossed really well, where I think if I'd used a thicker cardstock for the snow, I'd have lost some of that detail in the bottom half of the window. I'm using one of those sentiments for the inside of my card as well. It says, may your holidays sparkle with joy and laughter. I have learned my lesson in the last few months. Definitely stamp the inside of the card before you go putting everything else together. Um, otherwise, otherwise. <laughs> uh, then it's a lot of pressure when you go to stamp the inside and everything else is done. So I am just holding my A2 panel up to my card base and adding glue right inside that window. And then I will inlay that rectangle that we cut out. I will pop up the rest of the A2 panel, right? So that we have this sort of window recessed inside. I'm gonna use some rip and stick tape just around the edges of that window. And then I will add a little sheet of acetate. This is just some recycled packaging and I'll press that firmly into my double-sided tape. Next, I'm going to add my images and I want some of my images outside of the shaker and some of them inside of the shaker. So I've got my polar bear and a, a sort of snowy cliff on the right and then this smaller one i'm going to put inside and i'm making sure again that i've got glue all over the back of that and i'm going to press it firmly especially over that debossed edge to make sure um, that when i go to close everything up that's going to be okay i've got my little guy sticking out of the snow and he's going to overlap that window a little bit i want the window to feel like part of the scene not a separate something right? It's just going to be a little bit of a blizzard back in there. Um, so I'm gluing a lot of my images down flat to the front, but then the little penguin that's on top of the acetate right now, we're going to turn him into a shaker bit to stick inside of there. So it's like he's jumping up and down and playing in the snow, and maybe he's going to end up upside down in the snow as well. I have 120 pound heavyweight white cardstock and uh, I put four layers. I tell you what, that was a mistake. Three would be great. I want more than one because I want it to have some weight. It shakes better when there's a little bit more weight, but ultimately this was a real tight fit and he can get kind of wedged in there. So let's pretend like I only added three. 
um, and that he shakes beautifully. Okay, so I am adding just a little bit of sparkle pen to the tops of their hats because I forgot to do that earlier. But now we're gonna start to add our foam tape. I really wish I had some of the world's best foam tape. Mine is in the mail. <laughs> it's not here yet. Um, but that would have made this a whole lot easier. Instead, I'm just using what I have and I doubled this up, right? So this is two layers thick and I'm putting it on the card base, not behind the window. And I am going to butt that up as close to that little panel as I can. And then we'll add this Snow Day Confetti Mix. This is another newer one from Trinity. Uh, and again, I'm str <laughs> struggling to pour out sequins without getting them absolutely everywhere. I peeled off all of that release paper and I added some wet glue and I stuck it into the corner of my Misty just to try to help me line this up. I'll be honest, this looks pretty smooth in the edit, but I picked that up a couple of times before I got it down right. Um, if I had used the world's best foam tape, that would have been a little bit easier and less of a gluey mess. For a sentiment, I'm using the season's greetings that comes in that same die set with the polar bear and the penguins. There is a die that will bubble cut that out for you, but I knew I wanted to back it with this dark purple cardstock for a little pop of color. So I just cut that into a little rectangle strip and then I overlapped it with our window and we have this unusual shaker. It's sort of a different shape, a surprising window, the deboss detail on the inside. I really love this. I hope this helps you to think a little differently about what dies you can use for your shaker windows or how you cut them into your cards. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I will see you next time.